navigating massive loss. One of the things that I think people often wonder is, does all the personal development stuff actually work? Does the self-help content, the self-care stuff, the, the information, the wisdom, does this actually transfer over to real world results? Now, you will know if that's true for you or not based on how you navigate and handle crisis, how you navigate and handle adversity. When people are in a normal scenario, a normal life, where they're not being challenged, it can be one thing to wonder, you know, how would I navigate a challenge in my life? How would I navigate loss in my life? And one of the things that you guys know that I talk about all the time is becoming the 2.0 version of yourself. You need to see it as a duty to your people to become that best version of you. Because we're all going to face adversity and loss in this life. And when those times come, and they will, that's when the weak links in the chain will be exposed. And you'll know those weak links in the chain are true for you because they'll come in the form of things like self-soothing with food. You'll emotionally eat your face off. Gain a bunch of weight, you'll just be pounding the Doritos and the donuts and the fast food and making all these fucking excuses as to why. You'll be hitting more alcohol than normal. You'll be medicating. You'll be smoking more weed. You'll be hitting more Kratom. You'll be doing all the things that at your disposal to modify your state to try and get out of that suffering and pain. One of the things that I found in my own journey is that I have a very addictive personality. And if I don't fill my routine, my schedule, my day with positive things, you can be rest assured I'm going to fill it with a bunch of negative shit. Most people operate from that place. Most people operate from that place of self-soothing, of filling their suffering with things that actually make them feel worse. And this past week, literally three days ago, my wife Lauren had a miscarriage. She was 10 weeks pregnant and uh, we were expecting our second child. And we were already planning. We were already talking about it. We were already getting excited to share it with everyone. And we came to New Zealand, as you can see in the background here, for three months. And the first day here, she wasn't feeling good. And I won't go into all the details, but needless to say, we had to take her to the hospital. We took her for an emergency ultrasound and the baby was gone. And it's during times like this that your character will be revealed to yourself. It's times like this your character will be revealed to yourself and to everyone around you. And obviously it's challenging going through that, right? For anyone who's gone through it, going through a miscarriage is, is, is challenging emotionally challenging physically challenging for the the woman involved emotionally challenging for the father and the mother and everyone around you see you go through that loss right and in many ways you don't really understand the magnitude of it till you actually go through one yourself it's one of those things where until you walk that path you really don't know how much of a sense of loss it can feel anyway not only did we go through that, but she then proceeds to start to excessively bleed, which was very dangerous. Obviously, we don't want her bleeding out, so we had to rush her back to the emergency room in the evening, and she ended up staying the whole night there. 
I slept on the floor right next to her and, and my daughter and I didn't I slept probably an, an hour and I still got up in the morning and, and people saw it in my stories I still got up in the morning and I did my, my morning rituals my morning routine why not to be some blowhard not to be some like oh look at me because I know that if I do not fill my day with positive things what do you think is going to happen you're going to fill it with negative shit and that's what most of you do I can look at someone I can look at your physical appearance if you're fat out of shape and you're not looking after yourself it's because during adversity you do the wrong things during crisis you self-soothe with the wrong things so the take-home message today is that we're all going to face loss in this life all of us massive loss but we have a choice as to how we handle and cope and deal with that sense of loss so we can medicate it away with Ambien and sleep aids and more stimulants and caffeine and Ritalin and Kratom and Carva and cannabis and alcohol and everything we can think of. Fast food. All of it. All of it, right? Or we can channel and go in and do the workouts. Focus on serving others. Focus on keeping those morning and evening routines intact. Focusing on reframing the loss, reframing the challenge. You know, I look at Lauren's miscarriage and I think to myself, if anything, it reminds me that most stuff in this world is not that important. Most of the stuff that you and I worry about on a daily basis is really not that important. And so if anything, the gift that this little being was able to give me was that get back to what truly matters get back to loving your wife and daughter right now and get back to living but at the same time continue to hold yourself to higher standards because if you're anything like me and you have a very addictive personality it's a very very slippery slope you know if you're hitting the the alcohol if you're eating the the junk food and you're gaining a bunch of weight and you're waking up in the morning and you're feeling awful which is a lot of people I know because I talk to some of you guys about this you've got to change you've got to make the change for you and your family for your tribe because they turn to you they look at you for direction so what are you demonstrating to them are you demonstrating that you're someone who's a strong Spartan Leonidas like leader during times of crisis or you are demonstrating to them that you're soft and weak and ill-disciplined and distracted what do you think they're going to take away from that when they face loss in their life do you want to equip them the people around you with the skills and the belief and the tools to overcome any challenge or do you want them to cave like you you got to ask yourself that question so Today, in light of what's happened this week, I'm appreciative of it all. And I'm not just saying that for this video. Yeah, it's not ideal. I never wanted this to happen. And it's hard to see my wife go through this and my daughter to struggle to understand what happened. But this is where we're at. And what I do have control of is my reaction. My choice is right now. And so I choose to eat healthy. I don't want to put toxic shit in my body that's going to like affect my brain chemistry and inflame my psychology and make me feel worse. Increase anxiety, increase depression. Cannot happen. I'm not going to stay up. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do any mind-altering external substances. It's got to come from within. And that's the big part of the reason why you see me in my stories and on social media do the Superman push-ups in the morning, do the daily workouts, do like a lot of movement because it acts like a pressure release valve. I'm not doing this for the fat loss or the, the aesthetics. That's a byproduct. It's a byproduct. What I'm doing it for is to elevate my state so when I'm in that elevated state, I can handle anything. I can handle anything that life throws at me, including this. 
So that's the message today. So if you're not in that place, this is a learned set of skills. This is not something that I was born with. This is not something that I used to be able to handle. Years and years and years ago, this would have crushed me into oblivion. I'd be drinking right now. But I'm not because I've mastered this. So it starts with this. You want to improve your health? You want to improve your life? You better improve this first. That's my message for you today.